Yo, what is going on guys? Warcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we will be doing yet another combat critique or a combat analysis of my personal 1VXs, a series in which I break down my personal 1VX triumphs and I tell you what I did right, what I did wrong, and kind of what I'm thinking in hopes on making you a little bit better PvP or maybe you'll pick up some tips and tricks that you didn't know prior. Or if you're a veteran CESO, please stick around too because you can pick apart my 1VX and tell me how absolutely crap I am at the game. Um, if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, please do so with a like or sub. But if you want to go one step further, I have a YouTube membership. All the perks are listed below. And I also have a Patreon, which some of the perks include access to private Discord channels and personal PvP coaching if you want to get a little bit better at PvP in ESO. So again, if all that sounds interesting, the description uh, has everything. So let's get into it. Alright guys, hopefully you like the new ring lights, uh, you get to see all the pits and how terrible my skin actually is because my girlfriend did buy me an amazing ring light for the holidays, so uh, shout out to her. So it's important for you guys to know what sets I'm running on this, I'm rocking my Demigod PvP build, I'm running Iron Blood on the back bar, we're running Ring at the Pale Order since I am solo on the front bar, we're running Burning Spell Weave, and also the Two-Piece Magnet Incarnate for the monster set. So. With that out of the way, we're going to start here. So this is why I like, like running wings right now with Ring of the Pell Order. I mean, if you guys saw my last video, I explained how kind of OP wings are. So the beauty of running Pell Order is that any damage that you do, you get 20% of that damage back as health. Okay, so let me break down my bar setup right now. We are running uh, your typical uh, engulfing flames. We're running uh, burning embers. Then we're also running down here a Flames of Oblivion. A Flames of Oblivion is our spammable. I'm using it to proc my Molten Fury Whips just so you can get those really big crits going on. And we're completely expecting the crit at this point when it comes to champion points and TP too. So uh, right here is, you'll love to see it. I have add-ons to pack my Iron Blood, my Burning Spell we proc. When you have these two buffs going, you need to go Big Dick as the indicator suggests. So just gonna start out here. We're not really doing anything. I'm trying to get my Seething Furies procced up. We jumped on a resource. I think there is one other EP here. He's kind of, you know, distracting them, whatever. But the big thing that I want to kind of iterate in this video is you need to really pay attention to your terrain. Um, I actually almost get completely clapped by a uh, a wheelchair or a cart. For, and you'd be surprised what can really mess up your 1VXs. But that, 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 that's, that's just some snafu stuff. But right now... I am expecting to roll dodging. Um, you'll see me roll dodge quite a bit. My whole purpose is to get up in their faces and close the gap as much as I possibly can because on the DK I'm not running any sort of gap closer nor am I running misform. So it's very important for me to just get up on people. Um, I have a tracker here for my Seething Fury proc. So don't throw out your whips unless you absolutely have to, right? The, the whole purpose of this build is to soften everyone up especially oh, on the dk class in general is to soften everyone up and then when you see them around 60 percent threshold you can leap into a whip and usually they die so right here guys is this part that cost me <laughs> there's two roll dodges right there okay and then we get streaked uh, let me go back and just show you how detrimental this stupid ass card is so Roll dodge once, I try to roll dodge again, I get caught on this cart, I get streaked, I get stunned, I have to roll dodge again. This is not what you want, please pay attention to your environment and what's going on, okay? Please. So, right now, I'm spamming wings, again, let me reiterate, I'm running Ring of the Pillar with wings. This gives me an incredible amount of heal back from whenever I'm light attacking from projectiles. You'll see this fellow back here, it hits him for a 33, 25 right here right and and as a result i'm getting 933 back in health so when everyone's just simply lie attacking you you do get healed for quite a bit and i'm not just doing it with rapid regen like ring the pill order definitely plays into this as well i'm trying to pay attention to what's on my debuff bar down here um i'm not at all concerned with dying because i don't see an execute or anything like that on me now if i saw a sork execute on my debuff bar i would be a little bit more hesitant to try to go in on people but right now i'm just kind of playing the kite game i'm trying to get to this guy in the back so i'm popping wings literally off cooldown because i recognize everyone behind me is projectile based now if you're getting stamina classes i get in the habit of 
using wings when there's absolutely no projectile classes around me and that's a very bad habit to get into so i'm literally spamming wings of cooldown as this as if it's a ward it's 50 percent negation plus i'm getting a lot of healing from it with the flames of oblivion procs that permeate from it so i'm getting radiance of destruction i i'm not a big fan of that so before i even get my seething fury procs up it it doesn't matter i saw him around 30 percent health i'm going to leave him and just delete him from the fight and this is what kind of opens up the 1vx again i'm just buffing rebuffing notice i have all my buff products here i also have burning spell weave trying to bake them into the open yet again um, i'm roll dodging uh, pretty much um off cooldown so a, a good habit and what i mean by off cooldown is that you're you're not getting stacking but when you roll dodge, you have a window in which if you roll dodge again, it costs you 50% more. I'm waiting on that window to fall off and then roll dodge again. That's the most efficient way to do this. So right here is kind of an important point. So you get, oh yeah, so a good habit to get into is roll dodging and using rapid regen. Um, I didn't do it correctly here, but if you can uh, your, your roll dodge acts like an animation can so you can do this with mines you can do this with with anything with the kind of a wonky cast animation engulfing flames especially is something really good to do this with so if you roll dodge if you activate your ability and then you immediately roll dodge your character does not even perform the animation whatsoever and that shaves off like a third sometimes a half of a second that you would not otherwise have if you didn't do that in that order so it's just a really good habit to get into. So right now, I'm not at any threat of dying. Everyone's projectile base. I'm popping wings again. Like I said, I'll pull down. I see right here my Iron Blood proc, and this is what I like to do. I like to wait for my Iron Blood proc, which gives you 30% mitigation, and then that's when you go ham. Because even if you do get punished with a CC like Donnie Spindlewind, you're going to live. That's exactly what I do. I keep in track of my Seething Fury procs. I noticed, look at his health bar guys, uh, this Rick.B is at 54% health, and I'm going to focus him immediately. Typically, right here, I do kind of mess up, and I do not have Engulfing Flames, you can tell by the debuff bar up here. Ideally, you'll want Engulfing Flames, but I saw him at a low enough percentage of health to where I knew if I fossilized into a whip, I could probably kill him. And I get lucky, I do, we get a 9500 non-crit, and... As a habit, like after every single kill, I don't know why I do it. I'm not sure if this is just, you know, 200 IQ Horcrux taking over. But after every kill, I really like to roll dodge afterwards. And because Iron Blood puts a slow on you, we'll kind of back it up right here. So I kill him. So the next thing you need to do is pick your next target. I see a 50% health fell out here. He has a bear. He's a really cute bear, by the way. I also have Iron Blood up. This is the reason I roll dodge here in hindsight is because I do not want to be slowed. So when you roll dodge, when you have Iron Blood up, you completely remove that snaring ability that you get. And if you time your jump correctly right after the roll dodge, you can B-hop and actually carry your momentum even further. I'm still practicing that myself, but uh, yeah, just a little combat tip. Again, popping wings, I'll cool down. I didn't go on that guy just because he is a warden. He's generally pretty tanky. I noticed the Sork out here with a pretty low health pool. Um, maybe a little bit of a newer player. And I just immediately go in on him. He almost kills himself with just lie attacking. So, kind of back here. So he takes two, 2k damage just from my wings. He takes another 2k damage. And then with Volatile Armor up, he's using Crushing Shock. So he's getting hit three uh actually four additional times here because he's using crushing shock i'm not sure where the 1000 damage comes from and another lie attack that actually crit because of wings is reflecting um his stuff back at him so in this window right here i've already done like 8000 damage to this guy without doing anything and that's all because of wings and balls out harm and plus i'm getting healed for it you can see right here right so this 4000 crit is actually healed me by a thousand um, which is pretty awesome so He's at a nice juicy threshold to where I can just focus. So I apply Flames of Oblivion. That's the very first thing I like to do because it hits three people now. Plus it has a really, really high chance to apply the burning status effect. It, if you run one charge enchantment, it has a 50% chance of applying the burning status effect. And this can hit up to three people, right? Also with 
wings, you also have a 50% chance to apply the burning status effect when it hits you. So another good reason I'm running wings, it cost me 30, $32.50 on my build to run wings, and I probably hit 10 or 15 people and I'm 1vx and getting line attack. So of those 10 or 15 people, it's going to inflict the burning status effect on 50% of them. For, so we'll just say six or seven, right? That's six and seven thousand magica I'm getting back from popping wings. First of all, wings only cost me 3,000. So the worst case scenario, I'm at least getting my resources back. And, and sometimes I'm actually getting more resources back from popping wings than, you know, I'm actually getting more back from how much the ability costs. I'm um, right here. Good habit to get into as well on the DK. Um, you have to be a really good predictor of when they're going to roll dodge. Usually when people get pretty low, their first instinct is to roll dodge. So right here, I pop engulfing flames just because I know for a fact he's going to roll dodge. So. He roll dodges here, but it still catches him. And then he's out of stamina, so I'm just going for a fossilize. I'm not going to waste my time uh, using burning embers when I can go ahead and close out the kill. It's very important for you to not be OCD and just close out the kills when you can. I have a really bad habit of even if they have a bee's dick worth of health left, I want to apply another dot for some reason instead of pressuring them with whip. Um, that's something I'm working on myself as well. Um. Another good habit to get into on the Magicka Dragonite, I'm not sure, uh, I think I did somewhere back here in a, a previous um, interaction, but any pet that you see, toss burning embers on that pet, because if they resummon the pet, or it dies, or it falls off, you're going to get healed by a metric shit ton from your burning embers, but anytime you see a pet, dot that bitch up, okay? Um, right here, again, it's really important to kind of keep track of all your buffs and debuffs. I see Icy Touch here. I know he's a very tinky uh, dude because he zergs me down all the time. And I have my Molten Fury procs up. I have Burning Spell Weave. I have all my dots. And this is the time going to go big dick. So he does a really good block here. Typically, um, there's two ways to throw out your combo. It really depends on whether or not the person you're focusing is uh, paying attention to what they're doing. So... What I should have done here, um, at this instance, instead of leaping, the safer bet would have been to fossilize first and then leap. Because when you get fossilized, it's very unlikely that they are going to be able to block the incoming damage from the leap afterwards. And most people, when they get fossilized, they will break free roll dodge. So even when they're roll dodging, you're able to leap them in the roll dodge. So that would have been the correct play here. I go for the, the leap and he correctly blocked, which completely negated my burst. I even go in for the whip, which he blocks, but I think he's out of stamina at this point, so it actually goes through. And yeah, he's dead. The last guy we have left here is this uh, sorcerer. He gets to apply his, um, his buffs. He's at 50% health, and this is when EP just kind of comes in and cleans up for me, but um, it's all the same, right? So that's a nice little 1VX, of course, EP comes in at the end but the, yeah uh guys if this was enough of a breakdown please let me know if you want more of a breakdown i can uh, do that if you want me to literally break down every single cast i'm doing now this is a little teaser to the next one i'm not sure if you guys would be interested in watching this but the next one i do is very similar uh, this is actually against uh <laughs> here's icy touch again right this is a high note because he's urging me down so this is going to be the next iteration that I do. But uh, yeah, if you guys like this sort of content, they want me to keep doing this, please let me know down in the comments. If you found this helpful in the least, please let me know if there's anything else that I can do to improve on or if you guys want to hear instead of me talking about or just kind of shout casting what I'm doing. Maybe a little bit deeper of a dev breakdown. I'm not sure how new people are who watch this video i'm not sure if you're completely new to bpp or an average player or you're above average um please let me know down in the comments of how you feel your rating is in pvp you know are you new not new you know whatever just so i have an idea of what exactly i need to talk about in these videos because quite frankly i leave quite a bit out if you are a newer player right i there's so much i'll leave out like I attack weaving in between attacks like why I'm using my spells in the order that I am, you know, little things like that. So again, let me know down in the comments. But uh, yeah, uh, this has been Horcrux. Hopefully you guys have 
a great new year's i will have a couple more videos coming out this week i'll also be streaming halo some onyx rank this is uh the max speed b rank that you can get in halo infinite currently so if you guys would be interested in watching that please hit the like and bell icon just so you're notified when i go live and uh this has been horcrux fellas you all have a great rest of your day and peace